Central Perk, uh, Brian Wilkie. That's right. Great. Yeah. And you're the man behind uh, the Golf for Good. I understand. Two of us originally. Okay. Six years ago. Okay. So tell me how. Uh, tell me what about Golf for Good. Well, about uh, seven years ago, a friend asked me if I'd sponsor him a cycle around Cuba in aid of uh, guide dogs for the blind, the British charity. Otherwise, that sounded like a good crack. So I rang back and said, no, I wouldn't sponsor it, but I'd go with him. So four of us went, we cycled across Cuba, we had a great time. The group raised something like £80,000 for the charity. And when I came back, I wrote an article for a magazine here, which said, what a great idea it was. But it's a bit weird cycling across one of the poorest countries in the world to raise money for one of the richest. So I thought, this would be a good idea for here if it's adapted. And a few months later, the same friend wanted to raise money for an ambulance for Namibia. In the end, it went better than ever expected. So we got 49 people in the group, 44 of us got to the top, which is a record for a mixed ability group. And we ended up raising enough money for four ambulances. And we had them delivered to Dar es Salaam, to Tanzania. We drove the four clear across Africa and dropped them off in the place of the team of volunteers who paid their own expenses drop them off in the place where they were, they were meant for. And those ambulances are still going today. Uh, one's in Malawi doing blood donations uh, in poor areas. Uh, the other three are helping out clinics in Tanzania and Namibia. So we, we look after them. So, and that's how Gulf of Good started. So that was 2001. We've now done 21 challenges in 15 countries. There's something like 400 people on the challenges all together. And we've raised well over a million dollars. We've built hospitals in Nepal, we've done clinics in Palestine, with schools in Jordan. Uh, most recently, we did a challenge in Oman. We kayaked around the Muslim Down Peninsula, north of here, which was supposed to be a relatively moderate challenge, but we've been the first stormy week they had in December for, for years, and it was, a, it was a tough challenge. But it raised money for blind, uh, blind school in Oman, in Muscat. The idea is we've given them computers and software that let blind people learn how to use computers and therefore get jobs working in, in call centers. And those people can actually join the workforce, get married, have a normal life. And it's making a huge difference to some people down there. And that's what the government tries to do. We look for a charity in the region where the challenges take place. And then we'll buy equipment or we'll build something for them that they need in that So what are the challenges that you've got prepared for the, the next sort of 12 months? It's a great one. Um, I mentioned the motorbiking already in, in China, but the first one is next month uh, in Borneo, which I just came back last week and checked out the route. We're going to be climbing Mount Kinabalu, the highest mountain in the Southeast Asia. Which isn't that high, it's only four and a half thousand meters, but it's a tough walk up and down. Not a climb, it's like a real really stiff walk. But we're also kayaking, uh, cycling, on and off road. And on the last day, we make our own bamboo rafts and then we raft them down the river. So you're making your raft and you sail that raft down, so better make sure you make it well. Uh, that's an age of a, of a local orphanage and uh, some plantation schools. September in China, motorcycling. The month after, we've got two groups going to the Everest Base Camp. One is from English College in Dubai, and the other one is just a, a group of uh, adults in general. We've got 18 signed up so far, 25 places, walking to the Everest Base Camp, which is probably the toughest one that we do, but a great challenge. Again, in aid of an orphanage in Nepal, in Kathmandu, and a, and a hospital that we built a few years ago. In February, it's a strand loper in South Africa, walking along the beaches and the headlands of the wild coast for AIDS children. Um, it's Jordan, cycling, uh, walking from the Dead Sea to Petra, and then cycling from Petra to the Red Sea at Aqaba, in aid of Jordanian charities. Kilimanjaro in July, our well, first one, still the favourite one. Uh, and then I think the last one next year is Madagascar, Kaiser again. And we're looking at possibly putting in the Inca Trail and Peru that we did two years back. And possibly a ski challenge. Normally we do four challenges a year, but they're all up on the website, which is uh, www.gulfnumber4good.org. So it's gulf4good.org.
all people can call our uh, Dubai number, Dubai 368022. What we're trying to do in Gulf for Good, if that's our very first objective in the brochure, is to bring together Gulf nationals and expatriates in a good cause. And we've had something like 34 nationalities on, on the challenges. And, you know, if you're walking to the Everest base camp, for 12 days alongside somebody, you know, you see American teachers and German accountants and Pakistani housewives and, you know, people just walking along and getting to know and learn about each other. It goes a fair way towards um, creating a small community and those ripples spread. And the, the goal for good challenges, they're not just limited to... Uh, UAE-based uh, nationals. I mean, anyone can come along and Very much. Uh, and do a, a golf good challenge, and then that money gets distributed. Yeah, the idea is that we organise a challenge, which could be say kayaking, walking, cycling, whatever. We've got a, a motorcycling challenge coming up in China in September. World War Two replica bikes with sidecars, and they're going to go from Beijing to Mongolia and back. Um, but the idea is that. <coughs> Wherever the challenge takes place, we look for a good cause in that area to support. So the Omani kayaking supported the Blind School of Muscat when we cycled from Thailand to Cambodia a couple of years ago. Supported an orphanage in, in Bangkok and one in a town called Battambang, Cambodia. Do you think that there is uh, a real focused drive towards you know, companies in the Gulf region to become CSR positive? It's coming. Um, Dubai founded last year the Dubai Centre for Corporate Values just up the road here in Media City and their brief is by the end of this year to introduce some guidelines for companies to, to contribute to, to CSR in many ways and a lot of companies have started to do it. We've seen it with projects like um, DuckTap, Dubai Community Theatre, with Gulf for Good and other things, Foresight recently. The companies are increasingly saying, yeah, okay, let's just get away from the the pure zakat idea, the, the Arab idea of giving arms and help just to the, the very poorest, but help a variety of causes. Um, and you've got things coming up, Gulf for Good for example, we the beneficiary of a campaign starting very shortly, the first official national campaign in the region to recycle mobile phones, which Etislat, Do, the Telecoms Regulatory Authority are all supporting and all the mobile phone companies are chipping in so every phone that's recovered that they manufacture they will give a certain amount to the company behind it and half of that will go to Gulf for Good to help us in our drive for growth and for regional charities and that sort of thing's coming about without coercion, without laws being passed. Do you think it's a, a general sort of feeling now that people are maybe more aware through education you know, where they're the money that they spend in the shops in the high street, where it actually goes and how it's being spent. Yeah, there's a bit of that. I mean, the, the fair trade campaigns and that sort of thing. I think also there's a bit of a sense now in, in this part of the world that people have done pretty well and companies have done pretty well. We're not taxed. All right, I know the level of fees of some things is, is getting a bit frightening, but there's still no tax. And I think people realise they've done well, they're a bit privileged, it's a, a blessed lifestyle, as I heard described recently. So it's time to give a bit back. And there's lots, of, even in, in Dubai, there's lots of needy causes around the region, of course, around the world, there's, there's more than ever. So there's more of a feeling of helping others in general. And I think that's true of Dubai or Dublin or Darjeeling or wherever you have in the world. There's a lot more books and, and things written about it, the, the live aid, the bonos and all the rest of it are getting more and more involved in, in people. And the young people behind it, which really wasn't uh, true 20 years ago, I think. Now more than ever it is. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>